Welcome to Slump Busters. It is time for another game preview. And I have to ask you, are you ready to tighten up or ask who day? As we have the Tennessee Titans versus Cincinnati Bengals in our opening game on Saturday for the NFL Divisional Round of the Playoffs. Joining us on this podcast is going to be Blake Jude of the Stripe Hype Podcast. Go ahead and check him out at Stripe Hype Cincy on IG. Also, writes a couple articles or two for Phil to court. So Blake Jude, thank you for coming into the podcast. Blake, my first question for you, how quickly did you send your first text message about a Cincinnati Bengals playoff victory? Well, thank you guys for having me. And of course, it's the first thing I did. The moment I had, uh, I remember being just out of this world, so excited to see the final game winning interception and Jermaine Pratt winning the Bengals, their first playoff game in 31 years. It was magical. And I sent a lot of text messages that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't get to talk to you afterwards and it, it seemed like it was just craziness because I imagine at the very end when Derek Carr has three plays to get into the end zone, you have to stop him three times and you win your first playoff game and if not, you have overtime. Just what are the last two minutes of that game looking like for one Blake Jude? <laughs> Listen, the last time we played in a playoff game, it was, of course, the Steelers 2015 game where Cincinnati had every opportunity to win at the, uh, in, the, in the final seconds, of course, and of uh, two big penalties blow at Chris Boswell game winning field goal. I was just imagining how we could screw it up this time because that's just the Cincinnati way, right? Just screwing it up in big moments whenever it mattered most. But big players stepped up at big times. And I think that I can't help but just credit Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor and, and the entirety of the Bengals front office for kind of creating, I guess, a, a new regime, a new roster of of players who go, who are out there and, and making big plays and big moments, and I mean, I, I don't think it. La I don't remember the last time I've seen a Bengals defense actually stop someone in the red zone, and and to see them finally do it on a fourth down at the end of the game and, and at goal line, especially against a hot Raiders team that's been playing really really well lately, uh, it was really exciting and it's, it's just surreal almost just to see it finally happen because I was just I was just imagining Darren Waller catching a pass and back at the end zone for a touchdown. I didn't think we ended up getting a stop whenever it mattered most. Well, this week you're a Jermaine Pratt enthusiast. I I'm a Joe Burrow enthusiast. I have to say that I just instantly gravitated this team when they started to really show their true stripes. Joe Burrow, for the next 10 years, what's the ceiling on this guy? How much of a belief do you have in him? Man, after the first rookie year uh, of, of Joe Burrow and what he went through, of just, especially going that gets that knee injury, I think a lot of Bengals fans, myself included, were starting to actually wonder, like, you know, is this guy going to have a cap ceiling after his knee injury? We we know that he a big part of his game is being able to improvise and make plays out of the pocket. Do we know if he can do that at the next level? This offensive line is the worst in the NFL pretty easily, I thought at the time, and we were all wondering if, if we were making a mistake of ruining Joe Burrow's career, which almost for a while seemed impossible. Possible whenever we drafted him with the first overall pick back in 2020. And I, I just remember having those doubts and everything like that. But after that Minnesota Vikings game, we won and seeing what he could do with a teammate Jamar Chase, who was drafted number five overall, of course, in the 2021 draft. Uh, I think all those doubts went away. We started seeing Joe Burrow ball out. Even with a still pretty below average offensive line, he's still making plays. His knee injury, you almost forget about it even to happen at this point. He is still going out making plays. He is running the ball whenever he needs to. He can has great pocket awareness, still has elite accuracy. He's making big plays down the field, which I know were a big problem back in 2020. This guy is taking any single bit of things that has scared you at all. I mean, any, any sort of negative traits and that's completely wiped them away at this point. And he is especially showing up right now in big games. That's what we needed them to do first. He's won the last three really big games we've needed this season. Beat the Ravens with 500 passing yards in the big AFC North, uh, basically title game at that point. Uh, beat the Chiefs to clinch the playoff spot, which is huge against Patrick Mahomes on one of the biggest stages. I was actually at that game, a magical day as well. And then turn around to beat the Raiders to beat the, the 31 streak for the playoffs. So he's really in any single kind of category that we kind of asked him to do. Uh, and I just can't help but be impressed with him. He's become one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league now. And uh, to see him do that in only a second year of play is really impressive and exciting. So you're a big NFL draft guy, of course, an expert over on the Take It Easy podcast. And you were telling me, Logan Wilson, he's going to be awesome. Uh, Jonah Williams, when he gets healthy, he's going to be awesome. Last year, they signed Quentin Spain just being cut by Buffalo and picking him up on waivers and he was top 10 at left guard for pro football focus this year like these little moves here and there actually have kind of built a stable foundation that like you said 
it doesn't usually happen to the Bengals. The Bengals usually don't get lucky within the margins of getting pro bowlers in the third round or picking up top guards and stabilizing your offensive line in free agency or getting Trey Hendrickson after losing Carlos Dunlap. Like that doesn't usually happen to the Bengals. Yeah, the, the Bengals have had times where they've hit big on, on certain third or, or fourth round picks like Geno Adkins, Carlos Dunlap, guys like that. They've hit on some of those guys in the past, but they never hit on a lot of these guys, right? And they finally started to get up, found a path now where they're getting legitimate linebackers in the third, fourth round. We got Jermaine Pratt, Logan Wilson, Akeem Davis Gaither, who have all been really, really good players. And they've also gone out and done something that they've never done before, go out in free agency and get players. Now they have guys like Trey Hendrickson, who is now the team sack leader, a guy that's top 10 in sacks right now this year, has been really the biggest key piece of their defense. Went out and get Von Bell, who's one of the leading tacklers on the team right now. You have Mike Hilton, Chidabe Awuje, uh, even guys like Eli Apple, who was a name that, you know, most people kind of forgot about, kind of pushed aside. Now he's a cornerback too for a team that's in the playoffs right now playing the second round against the Tennessee Titans. So they've gone away, they found a way to go out and get a lot of new guys, a lot of really impressive guys uh, to, to ball out for them. And it's been really impressive to see uh, how Zach Taylor has done all of it because even some of the moves that they made, I questioned. I didn't know if they would be exactly elite guys at the next level. I know a lot of people had a lot of questions on the defense and again, the offensive line this entering this season, as did I. Uh, but to see everyone kind of glue together and work really, really well together, Zach Taylor made a priority to go out and get leaders on the NFL, on the NFL team. It feels like everyone bought in at the same time. Everyone tried to, you know, help hold each other accountable, become leaders for the team. It has really created a very, very good vibe and just uh, overall teamwork in Cincinnati. You bring up something that Kyle and I have talked about a ton on the Slump Buster podcast. Is Zach Taylor a good coach? And who has the coaching advantage between him and Mike Rabel this Saturday? <laughs> In terms of a head coach, I do think Zach Taylor is a very, very underrated head coach. And I've said it a lot uh, throughout our time in Cincinnati. That was something I'd always said. I think the biggest gripe I have on Zach Taylor right now is the play calling abilities he has. I don't think he's an elite play caller that people kind of think he is. And he does call the plays for the offense, which is the biggest, I think, question mark and, and thing that kind of hurts uh, a bunch of Bengals fans when it comes to Zach Taylor and why they, he's a very polarizing head coach, right? I mean, I know that a lot of people think he could be head, head coach of the year right now. And as do I, I think he's one of the best, as well as Mike Grable, who's also on that list. Uh, but I, I do think his, his play calling abilities is the biggest question right now. Uh, lately, he has been giving a lot more reign to Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator, as well as Joe Burrow himself, to try to take uh, reins as, as pl a play calling whenever it's mattered most as well. And that's kind of worked out a lot better whenever it's kind of a committee of three rather than just Zach Taylor doing it himself. But as a head coach, I do think he's a really, really good head coach. Is he one of the best? Not really. I mean, he's still going to be a guy that's going to be in the middle of the pack, I think, after several years. But if he's if he's able to do enough to be able to be good, if they're able to have good coordinators next to him, I think he can be a really, really good head coach. I would lean towards Mike Brable in terms of how good of a head coach he is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I still think that Taylor is young and still has some ways to go, especially you know being only in the stick-up playoff game now, while Mike Brable has been in several the last couple of years, of course. But I, I do think he is a very good head coach. He can certainly uh, keep the Bengals in a close game this time. Saturday. Well, going into the game on Saturday, the Bengals are definitely going to be without Larry Ogunjobi, who was awesome this year. He he went down in the Raiders game. Trey Hendrickson's in concussion protocol, so we don't we don't know if Trey Hendrickson's going to play or not. Apparently, I heard during that broadcast the Bengals had the same eleven starters in Week One that they did in the playoff game on defense, which I guess kind of makes sense. But I just found that kind of remarkable. So you going into the game feel how concerned about losing those two big guys up front? Yeah, Ogunjobi is a big loss. Uh, Ogunjobi is one of the better th uh, three techs the Bengals had on their team and, of course, was second in the team in sacks uh, this year next to Sam Hubbard as well. I think they were, they were tied for the lead in sacks, uh, second at least. And uh, he was a big factor. He was one of the better interior guys. One of the weakest points of the Cincinnati Bengals team back in 2020 was the lack of interior defensive line, pressures, and depth just in general. They weren't able to get a big of a push on the interior. Ogunjobi came in uh, as a guy that was on a pretty cheap deal from the Browns and, and actually did that to a very high level. He got a lot of pressure. He was getting sacks whenever he needed it was a very very good addition for the squad and he will no longer be uh, with the Bengals which is a which is a huge blow uh, but they do have a guy that they traded Billy Price for BJ Hill the guy from uh, North and uh, the New York Giants who's been a pretty good backup as well I do think he's capable of being a pretty good pass rusher on the interior and they do have no tackle with DJ Reader to try to plug up the middle and hopefully do something to stop Derrick Henry I don't know if it's possible but we could try potentially so I do think it's gonna be a pretty big loss of Larry Ogan Joby but I do trust the backups to try to come in and actually be a pretty good performer and Trey Hendrickson, actually, believe it or not, is actually back in practice now. I reported this uh, yesterday. Uh, he is expected to play on Sunday which or Saturday, which is huge for this team and, and very, very excited for that. But 
Uh, if there is something, if he maybe has a step back or anything like that, um, I would expect to see Cameron Sample, the uh, fourth round pick edge rusher from Tulane, and potentially be a guy who kind of come in and fill a starting spot. If not him, then Colin Cream as well, Notre Dame back in 2020. Uh, he's another guy that could be playing a lot of snaps in the event. Uh, we don't see Trey Jackson 100% ready to go because I do know, you know, even if Trey Jackson isn't 100%, they are still going to try to put him out there because he is the biggest pass rusher on this team. We saw that Cincinnati had almost a 30% pressure rate whenever he was on the field against the Raiders uh, back, back uh, last Saturday whenever they won. Whenever he left the field, it was only 9%. So pressure went straight down the moment he left the field. They need to have him if they want to get pressure to try to attain him on force to make mistakes, try to get the ball back. Excellent Bengals analysis there, Blake. But it is time to put our playoff predictions on the line. So naturally, I have to turn to the number one Titans hater on YouTube, Kyle Ledbetter, to give his game prediction as the Titans are coming off by to face these Bengals. Yeah, how, how cruel is it that the Titans might be in the AFC Championship two of the last three years and Lamar Jackson can't even sniff the conference championship? It's just sniff, absolutely sniff. brutal. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous how we do some of this analysis. Uh, again, the Titans are, I'm going to say this again, the Titans are the sixth best team in the AFC. I have been firm on this for about three weeks. I still believe it. Bengals are about the fourth best team in the AFC, but they have high upside offense, which is very much going to help. Derrick Henry was apparently practicing full contact today. I saw a 30 second clip of him practicing on Sports Center, So I think we can fully confirm that Derrick Henry is 100% back and healthy and going to rush for 400 yards in this game. I think that's the fair analysis we can do based on 30 seconds of seeing him in practice. Uh, I have no idea who's going to win this game, so I'm just going to flip a coin and see who I, I pick in this game because I, I got no idea on this one. Heads, bangles, tails, uh, titans. You're about to hate yourself when it's titans. Yeah, I hate myself. Yeah, it's the titans. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. But this is a good emotional hedge. I either get to be right on the pick or I get to laugh at the titans losing. One of the two. All righty, Blake. I assume I know which direction you're going to go, but confirm it for the people. Say it loudly. Say it proudly. Come on, Blake. Don't let me down. I'm a, I'm a Bengals fan. I think this is a game Cincinnati can win. They beat the Titans last year with a far worse team. They can do it again. I mean, they, they stopped Derrick Henry before. I'm not going to hold a pass to try to do it one more time. Let's hope that Joe Burrow beats the Steelers again and has a big game. I'll take Cincinnati to win this game. And where am I going to go with this one? I was a Cincinnati Bengals stan earlier in the season, but after weeks, after weeks of hearing my co-host go on and on about how the Chiefs got screwed out of the number one seed, I can only go with the true number one seed, the Tennessee Titans. Yes, did you know that Mike Vrabel coming off a of bye week is 4-0? Did you know Mike Vrabel is 8-0 when he has more time to prepare than the other coach? And did you know in the last two games that Mike Vrabel has had more time to prepare than the last coach? He outscored the other team by a margin of 25 points per game on a two-game sample size. I think that this is a perfect opportunity for the Tennessee Titans to exploit what the Bengals don't do well. As much as I love Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow has been sacked a ton this year. The second most sacked quarterback in the league is Josh Allen at 26. Joe Burrow has been sacked 51 times. Danico Autry, Harold Landry, and Jeffrey Simmons, I think all have a perfect opportunity to get after Joe Burrow's ass. And the only way that the Bengals really win this game is if their wide receivers can dominate the Tennessee secondary. When you have Janoris Jenkins and Buster Screen out there, that is definitely something that is something to be concerned about if you're a Tennessee Titans fan. But on the bright side, this is the healthiest the Tennessee Titans have been all season. Did you know their report only includes three people on it this week? All three are likely to play. And that is healthier than they were in week one when they had six people on injury designation. So this Tennessee Titans team, despite being marred by injuries all season, still managed to get the number one seed. And now they're fully healthy with the big guy coming back. Generational talent, Derrick Henry, best running back in the last 10 years, potentially the best running back of all time, and one of the all-time great football players, I'm ready to say right now, Derrick Henry, is going to be back in their starting lineup. Yes, I am going with the Tennessee Titans. Reluctantly, my co-host is going with the Tennessee Titans. Blake is standing by his Cincinnati Bengals. But, guys, if you want to see more of our previews, if you want, <laughs> if you want to see more oh. playoff action, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as we got more great guests like Blake coming to you. 
each and every day. Like I said, go ahead and check him out at Stripe Height Cincy on IG. Leave a like on this video because it helps this video get out to more people so we can continue building towards 2,000 subscribers. Comment below who you think will win this game. And from Juju Talk Sports, from Kyle Ledbetter, from Blake Jude, stay safe, happy, and healthy. We will see you next time.